Guys, sit down. It is snowing right now, but we're still thinking about the garden. And whoa, it is slippery. See? Uh, whoa. There he is. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm trying not to fall. But it's um, it's snowing on top of ice. It's been so uh, it's, it's, it was hot, and then it got cold, and everything. Ah. Hello, I'm ready to run into Peter. <laughs> Whoa, we're both sliding down now. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna try to make my way to the back garden. But yeah, it um, oh got hot, and then it froze, and then it snowed on top of it. You can't see if you're walking on top of ice or other stuff. So I'm headed out to the garden. I'm going to show you what we're working with out here. So, oh, let's go. Oh. Okay, I went down, but I'm okay. Here's the garden. We have our trellises left from the cucumbers. Cucumbers did not do well last year, but hopefully they'll do better this year. Trellis for the beans and more bean trellises there, or teepees. Okay, here's our greenhouse. And we have the uh, the shelves to put the plants on top of. Of course, snow on the roof, but that's okay. Uh, our beans that we grew in the greenhouse last year, but they, well, yeah, they did not produce, though. So we started very late in the year. Mary just wanted to do that for fun. And... I'll close up the door. Earlier this year, the little door on the side was open. Right now it's closed a bit, so I think there's some activity going on in there. It would be nice to have some owls. We have not seen or heard of any, but we're hoping that there are some owls out there. I'm going to show you the back gardens. And here is one of the back gardens. That's where we had all of our squash, tomatoes, and a few other things. We had corn here last year. I don't think we're going to put corn there this year. And then our compost piles over here. I have not checked on them in quite a while. Eh, it's hard to see how they're doing underneath the snow, but they're probably fine. You can't really mess up compost. Well, I guess you can if you put some bad things that you're not supposed to put in there. I guess oil or meat, things like that, probably ruin compost. Other than that, uh, it's hard to ruin compost. Let's see. Here's our other garden. Uh, we had tomatoes, beans, pumpkins, a few other things back there. And then these are the big blackberry bushes. And then here's the back garden. Last year, not much happened to this. We started very late in the year, and there is a lot of shade around here too. But this year, we're going to grow that one, and we'll put some shade-loving plants there, and they probably will do pretty well this year. But last year we just started this way too late. I'm just going to pan the back gardens right here so you can get a feel for the layout. And this is not our yard. The neighbor lets us use it and we share the produce from it. And we work together on the gardens. Here's our front yard garden. And there's some kale right there that we, well, we left it and then it kind of froze. But anyway, that's what we have to work with in our yard. Welcome back to Parsnips and Parsimony. As you saw, winter is still very much here. Kids are working on puzzles. Like you're going to hear them in the background. But I am sitting down, I'm standing, not sitting, standing because this was the cleanest spot to be able to set this all out since we've got two puzzles going on right now. And I'm going to see what I need to get in the line of seeds for this year's garden. And then. We're going to tally up and share with you guys how much did we actually get out of our garden last year. Even though we tripled our size, did we triple our volume or did that we bomb it this year? So without further ado, I'm gonna just dig into showing you guys what seeds I have left and then we'll go from there. This is my go basket from last year. I always kept my seeds that I was using most readily here. And again, I was trying to use up what I had. So definitely have leftover sticky traps. I bought these for the cucumber beetles. I don't know that they actually worked all that well. It could have been just the 
late season that I put them out. But I do have, this is almost a full box here. So I have those, but I also have a lot of, a lot of the tree tangle foot. If you watched my video from last year, I showed you how I use this to make my own cucumber beetle trap. It worked like a charm. And I thought this worked better than the yellow sticky traps, but whatever the case is, I do have some of that for next year. But I've got to dig through. There's a lot of seeds here. One thing's for sure, these nasturtiums that I planted did outstanding last mm -hmm. year. I have never had so many nasturtiums in my life. In fact, it actually cut down on how much I was able to grow in that one garden. Well, now we have to sort out flowers, squash, zucchini, beets. I think we have, I think we have too much. Can we still do um, really? watermelon, Mom? Will watermelon still be? We might try one more year. Okay, Mary and I haven't even gotten halfway through our bucket yet. <laughs> and look at all the seeds we have. Peace. This is greens. These are root crops. We have beets and radishes watermelon. and things like that, and watermelon, squash, pumpkins, anything like that. These are peas and beans, just a few cucumbers, I like, and we haven't even gotten to everything else. I like that too. Wow. Obviously, I have a very big mess here. So I think I'm going to start with all of my greens and set them out. And I actually did go through my seed catalogs and made a list of things I wanted to buy, but I wanted to double check what I had first. So I'm gonna start with the greens, lay them all out, and then go from there to see if there's anything else I need to add to my seeds or if this is enough. Seeds tend to last pretty well for two years. After that, the germination rate goes way down, but if I have a lot, I just hate to throw them out, so I just use them. But sometimes that means, you know, we don't have as much production. So I'm gonna lay it out and see what I've got. Okay, not a lot of spinach. This is my newest pack of spinach, and this is from 20. So this, we didn't buy any spinach last year, so I'm probably going to need to order spinach. Kale, I think I have plenty of that. Swiss chard. How much Swiss chard do you want me to order, Art? Well, we didn't use much last year. Right? Well, that was real late in the season. This one's from 2016. Um, and then lettuce. So these lettuces here, we bought at a discount store. These were packed for last year, but they should be fine. I've got a lot of that. I bought this and we didn't end up eating much of it. It came up really good, but by the time I got around to harvesting it because I was pregnant, that just didn't work out too well. Um, and then these guys were from last year too. And I feel like they have a lot of seed in it. So probably gonna wait on buying Lettuce, I've got a lot of lettuce. This is old. These are really old from 2015. I don't think there's much in there. So I don't know. I don't I don't count on these guys, but this was 2020. This I think is 2020. This is 21. And this was I bought these last year too. Really would like to increase our lettuce because I feel like we didn't have much lettuce last year. So I'm gonna write on my list, spinach. We're definitely gonna need to buy spinach, but everything else I think I'm gonna make do with what I have. I have a lot of beans, a lot. You would think beans were like my favorite vegetable art. <laughs> so these are all bush beans. I think one or two packages I had bought. My neighbor I had planted for him last year, so I have a lot of bush beans. This is an old package I bought. I don't even know if they're any good yet. These guys were what I got my hands on at the beginning of 2020 when seeds were really hard to get a hold of. And then I ended up not really using them. And then these are the ones that I heartily recommend everyone get. I was only able mid-season to be able to get these pole beans from Pine Tree Garden Seeds. 
they were fine. They worked fine. Uh, this is from Baker Creek here. And last year I had the girls collect seeds. And this is, I don't know how many, this is maybe oh, close to a pound, pound of them. And I know that these are not cross pollinate. I don't know if beans cross pollinate, but I know these aren't because by the time these beans were flowering, all of my bush beans were done. So these are pure po rattlesnake pole beans. I just don't know if they're going to sprout or not. I think what I'll end up doing is having the girls use the paper towel method and throw in 10. I think that's usually how you're supposed to test germination rate. We'll throw 10 in a paper towel and a wet paper towel. See how many of these germinate. And if I have a good germination rate, I think I'm probably just not gonna order any beans. Are you all right with that, Art? Uh, just as long as we make sure we have beans, we love beans. Well, I hate to say to put all my beans in one basket, but I, d I hate to buy beans if these are going to work for us. Well, they should work. Though. I think they would work. So that's the saga on the beans. We should have so many beans, it'll be coming out our ears. And you'll see how many beans we actually got last year, which was, I th was that a record for us? I think so. I think it was a record amount of beans. Yeah. And it's ever since we switched to these pole rattlesnake beans, it's been phenomenal. Okay, those are empty. What are those? Um, so peanuts. They're they're called nasturtium seeds. I'll put them in here. No, oh, 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 one one at a time, kiddo. Okay, don't grab a whole bunch of them. Just one at a time. Do you see different seeds in there? Look carefully. Do you see different seeds in there? Daniel, look, look. Are there different seeds, or are they all nasturtiums? No. Look. There's a. See the difference? That's a canna lily seed. I got the seed. Say canna lily. Candy. That's right. And then we have a pepita. 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 So I went through everything and I have a list of things that I definitely need to buy. Spinach, carrots, yellow squash, beets, broccoli, cauliflower, and tomatoes. Those are definite seeds that I need. There are some things that I want to try this year, including cabbage. I haven't done that before. Brussels sprouts. And huckleberries i found a variety that is an annual and they supposedly produce very well they're very similar to blueberries and since we've expanded our garden and i have some extra room i would like to try huckleberries i'm not sure if it's going to work but it's on my let's try it once and see what happens because you never know and i went through some of my seed catalogs the other night just browsing, I have, let's see, six different seed catalogs that have come in over the last two months. The ones that I like the most, Baker Creek, gorgeous. Love the inspiration in here. This is a great catalog. Territorial, an old favorite of mine. I'm probably not gonna be ordering from them, but I need to check to see what I need. And then this is my new one this year, Pine Tree, but this seems to have the most reasonable prices and the most reasonable shipping costs. So I may end up just doing them. I'm not sure. I have to see what's on my list here and here and then see which one's the best. I'm probably not going to order from multiple catalogs. I'll just pick one and go with that. For those of you who have never had a garden, this is probably like, what's the difference between all the seeds? Seeds are seeds. And seeds are just, they're like the key to an amazing plant. And a lot of the plants that are in seed catalogs, you can't necessarily get at your garden center. Sometimes you can, but if you want the best variety, it's best to order seeds and start them yourself. And for me, it's, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I love doing this type of thing. So I'm gonna sit down and work on that tonight and try to get that order in. 
I do want to end this video with a total of what our garden produced last year. I know many of you watched those videos. You came along with us as we weighed everything and the garden. Some things did really well in the garden and then other things not so well. And well, without further ado, I will show you the total. All right, so there it is. We have all of the vegetables broken down right there. If you want to pause the video, go ahead so you can read this a little bit more. But our entire total produce for the year 2021 was 771 pounds and 12 and a half ounces for our out of the country viewers, that's 350 and a half kilograms. Thank you, Art. He's the conversion expert here for doing that. As Art added up some of those totals, there were a couple things that really surprised us because we knew we had more in the garden that just never got harvested. Part of that was due to the fact that I found out I was pregnant towards the end of July and it was the beginning of the pregnancy. I was so sick the garden wasn't happening. So I missed my entire fall planting that I always put in July and August. And then the harvesting was so delayed, it's Art's busy season at his job, that he couldn't harvest. I was too sick to harvest. We couldn't even can or anything. So that total totally reflects a pregnancy. Now still, that's not shabby. I'm I'm thrilled. 770 plus pounds of produce that we grew ourselves is amazing. However, it's not the thousand pounds that we had in 2020. <laughs> a little disappointing, but you know, it. you can't control the weather and sometimes life circumstances make things difficult. So I say that to all of you guys because I know a lot of you guys followed along. Some of you even started gardens your first time last year. If your garden did not do well or not in your mind did well, don't give up because this year is an entire new year. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I was really happy with and then some of the things I wasn't so happy with. Okay, spinach was a rough one. One pound of spinach, just could not get that going no matter how much I tried. Kale was really good. I have a lot more kale. Again, that was a harvesting issue. Would have thought we would have harvested more than four pounds, but that's all we got. Rhubarb, had a ton of rhubarb out there, only harvested 10 pounds of it. Cucumbers were very disappointing. We really want to improve this number, and I think that's going to be one of my big focuses. Radishes were really good this year. The garlic scapes have kept really well in the refrigerator, so those are really a great way to uh, stretch my garlic. Peas, pathetic. Yellow squash, 108 pounds of yellow squash. That's a lot of yellow squash. Not so much zucchini. Carnival squash, 17. Spaghetti squash, 24 pounds. Butternut squash, 46 pounds. Zucchiniano, 43 pounds. Pumpkins, 123 pounds of pumpkins. Fabulous year, bad for blueberries. Six and a half pounds of garlic. Raspberries, we transplanted our plants, so I think this year's gonna be a lot better. We'll see. Green beans, 90 pounds of green beans. We wrote down some of the goods that we canned from the garden, and we were like at 47 or 48 quarts of green beans. We had a great year of green beans. Again, pole beans for the win. I know I feel like I'm a broken record. You cannot go wrong with pole beans, and those rattlesnake beans are just fabulous. They, obviously, you can see from this number, they produced phenomenally. Black beans were from my neighbor's garden. Only 125 pounds of tomatoes. Now, I, th I think for the amount of plants, we should have had a lot more, and I know we lost a lot to blight. So that should have been closer to the 250 mark, but because of all the wet weather, we lost that. Peaches, not bad, not great. I'm going to be doing some commercial spraying this year just because we can't get out from underneath the diseases that we're having on these peach trees. And there's no point in having them if you're not gonna get anything. Carrots were bad, the nasturtiums took over those. The uh, banana peppers, I thought we had more than that, but still, that's not that bad. Bell peppers, this is like right where we normally get. Jalapenos, 12 pounds of jalapenos. Four pounds of big gems, love these guys. We'll be replanting them. 26 pounds of corn. Let's see, 31 pounds of eggplant. Five 
almost five and a half pounds of elderberries, 13, almost 14 pounds of potatoes, which I thought was really good. Not beets were bad, and then parsnips got lost in the nasturtiums. So that brought our total to 771 pounds. I'm seriously looking forward to 2022. I have the greenhouse this year, which should allow me to start more plants and to have them grow even better. That's my hope. We'll see how it all works out. But for now, I'm gonna end the video. I'm gonna work on getting my seeds ordered and stay tuned, you're gonna see a whole lot more gardening again this year. Art and I are toying with the idea, I'm not sure that we're going to, but toying with the idea of doing a full-fledged garden journal that details everything that we're doing. So that would be from when we put fertilizer down to what we're growing when, when we put them outside, when we put them in the greenhouse, all those type of things to see if we can start noticing some trends of what works, what doesn't work. So thank you so much for coming along. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what your plans are for 2022 in your garden. What are you growing? Are you expanding? Are you keeping the same size? I would love to hear your stories and successes from last year as well. Leave it all in the comments below and I'll see you for next video. Good night.